This episode of Fully Charged comes from a land that produces far more electricity than it can use. So Adrian, we've come up to the um, Whiteley Wind Farm, which is very kind of you to drive. It's driven us here in a Nissan Leaf, so we've had an electric car drive up here. It is a bit windy and what's a, what's a good Scottish description? Drish, I it's think is the right word. <laughs> I can't quite say it. Uh, but this is an extraordinary wind farm. It's huge. I mean, there's 50 wind turbines. There's sort of 50 wind turbines and uh, I think nearly 500 megawatts of capacity. Right. So it's um, half the size of a nuclear power station. But the other, the other thing that I find fascinating that you do is you, you also generate electricity you just well, generate I, it like mad all over the place. I have, well, Scotland generates electricity like mad. Yeah. We, the, the government set a target of 30% renewables, um, uh, renewable electricity by last year. We uh, exceeded that target. I think that last year was 33% right. and that's increasing. So, that's, and, so, that, um, so all the electricity that's used in Scotland, 33% of it is coming from renewables. It's coming from it's renewables which is extraordinarily as we speak. Right. And, uh, the target is 100% renewables by 2020. Wow. And combined with that, the, the Scottish Government has declared that they want almost total decarbonisation of road transport by 2040, right. uh, maybe 2050. Yeah. Um, and uh, those two things are very closely allied. Yeah. Certainly yeah. south of the border, there's quite a lot of negativity about wind turbines. And they're all, you know, even today when I tweeted I was coming out, I got a, oh, you're going to see another blot on the landscape, are you, Lloyd? And so, yeah. I mean, there are, uh, you, uh, what, what, do you know what the general consensus is of the, the people who live around uh, here? Well, the, the, lot, the interesting thing is that the general consensus is, is moving in the direction of acceptance of wind turbines right. rather than the other direction. Right. People are finding that that generally renewable energy is not quite as intrusive on their lives as they thought it right. might be. Uh, this wind farm has 50 turbines. Down the road, Clyde Wind Farm, which is just coming on stream, has just announced it's built its 100th wind turbine right. and it has another 100 to go. And are they land-based um, ones? They're all land-based land ones. Wow. Yes, yes wow. they're all land-based. And uh, of course, there's, there's massive offshore energy resources to yep. be had. It's yep. replacing the oil industry in Scotland to a large extent. Right. Um, but the technology has a long way to go. Yeah, um, yeah. It's a huge industry and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a massive benefit to the you'll economy. Be the, you'll be the Saudi Arabia of the 21st well, century. Well, that's what we hope. Next, it was a short hop to the island of Isla, one of the Inner Hebrides, to see the future location for a slightly different method of generating quite chunky amounts of renewable energy. So, Andrew, we're in this ludicrously idyllic spot, an exquisite tidal inlet between two islands in Scotland and you want to put in huge distressing turbines to generate electricity which will ruin the environment. There, there's, there's <laughs> even <Sorry. laughs> so, so they're, they're, they're tidal turbines, so they're like wind turbines but in the water. They're, ti they're tidal turbines, they're three bladed uh, open rotor turbines, they sit on the seabed, uh, they're about 30 metres to the, the height of the, the top of the tip, wow. um, um, but we're putting them in about 50 metres of water, so there's right. a good clearance, uh, so the you know, vessels will still be able to go over the top of them. Right. Um, so it'll look exactly like it is, it is just now, the, uh, it'll, it'll remain identical. So what you see now is what, what you'll see once the devices are in. Right, and the reason for putting them in this location is because of the, so there's a strong tide going through. There's, yeah, this. There's, a, there's a very strong tidal flow here. Um, as, as the tide comes in, it floods in from the south, and then uh, ebbs back out, uh, running at about uh, seven knots. So we've got a, a good strong tidal flow. Right. Um, but it's also it's, it's an ideal location, partly because of the depth, but also because uh, it's sheltered from uh, the wind. So we've got Isla to the west, and we've got right. Jura to to the east. So we've got it's, it's a sheltered location as well. Right. And in terms of uh, environmental designations, it's it's uh, there's no real issues here that, right. that we've found through all the, the work that we've done. So right. it's in that sense, it's ideal. The reason for the location then is the strength of the tides. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I mean, I did notice the ferry that goes across is definitely not steering. To, or it doesn't look like yeah, it's steering no, towards it's, where it's going. It's like going at an angle to fight the tide. It's just to struggle against it. You see, yeah. the, the tides the tides flooding here, and it can flood up to about uh, uh, seven knots. Okay, so there's a good tide here, and right, that's, that's, that's part of the reason we're here. That's fast for water, isn't it? Seven knots. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's, it's a good speed. It means we can get a lot of energy out of right. it. People have put single devices in, 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 in different places across the world. This will, will hopefully be the, the first project where we put a, an array in. We put ten devices in. Right. 
and uh, what you learn from that is you learn how to do it consistently and you learn how to uh, how the, the turbines interact with each other. Right. So that's an interesting thing then. Is there, are there locations around Scotland then that, that are suitable to put in literally hundreds yeah, of I mean, devices? It's, it's, I mean, Scotland is, is, is very lucky. We have about 25% of, of Europe's uh, a tidal stream resource. When, you're, when that's installed, so this is 2014, yep. it's going online and that's when it'll be, all be done, but how much does that generate? Yeah, so it's, it's 10, 10 one megawatt devices. Right. Um, so that would produce about 30 gigawatt hours per year, which is about the amount of electricity that uh, the dialer uh, uses. Right. So for a population of about three and a half thousand plus the, the industry associated uh, with that. So Isla would, uh, the, the amount of electricity is, is about the same over a year right. that Isla would use. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. So, it would, so those 10 turbines in the sea that you can't even see yeah. will supply all the electricity the whole island Abs needs. Ab which is... Absolutely. So then I went for a spin with fellow electric car driver Mark and he powers his car along with everything else with a very unique way of generating electricity. So, I mean, the thing, the thing that caught my attention about what you do, well, yeah. for a start, I, I was given a bottle of your whiskey with the leaf on it. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Which was, and it's gorgeous. <laughs> I mean, and I'm not a big, yeah. I have no... Organic whiskey. You know, organic yeah, whiskey. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's really yeah. fantastic. Yeah. With an electric car on the label, I went, that yeah. is really cool. I want to go and see where that comes from. Uh, um, here on this island, uh, you know, we, 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 we wanted to grow our own barley like they used right. to 100 years ago. Right. So half our barley is now organic or biodynamically grown. Right. Um, and the other half is, 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 is grown here on Isla. What we get from, from distilling are two waste streams. One is the, the draft, which is the, the barley husks left over right. after we've extracted the sugar. Now, we give to the farmers, the farmers feed it to their cattle, the right. cattle create manure, the manure goes onto <laughs> the fields, grass. grows the barley that comes. Wow. So it's a wonderful you know, cycle, very yeah. natural uh, um, and, and economically beneficial cycle to, to, to everybody. The other waste stream is, is the pot ale, the watery whiskey waste, but it was never used constructively. And, and, and what we've done is, is, is um, applied a, a system called anaerobic digestion, you know, something that's been around right. for a while. Right. Um, and that means we can take that watery waste, um, put it into these tanks where specially uh, um, grown microbes um, eat up the organic material that's there, and basically dead yeast, and, yeah. and basically fart uh, methane, right. uh, um, which we then we then can use that methane to drive an engine, which turns an alternator, which creates electricity, right. which runs the distillery. Wow! It, it's a very natural sort of you know, again. It, it's this interlocking virtuous yeah. cycle, uh, um, which 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 appeals, which yeah. appeals to us. And, and, you know, we think it's terribly sort of you know, progressive what we're doing, yeah, but, the it's actually, but the reality is it's just going back to what to they what, did 150 done. years ago. So the electricity for this car comes from microbes farting methane. I like it, but there's more. Now, Gareth, one of the things I heard today from the people who work at the Brooklynadi Distillery <laughs> was good. that they had a, quite a severe power cut over the winter and they didn't have electricity for a while. And then I thought, oh, electric cars, electricity, all oh, problem. But then I see this. Now, uh, to the uninitiated, this might look like that we're charging the car here. Absolutely. Well, it, yeah. it, it's kind of a charger in reverse, if you like. Right. Um, it's a prototype system from Japan. Um, so it was set up very much for the Japanese market. Obviously, they've had recently a, a big need for sort of remote power supply right. after the, the tsunami. So what we've got here is a unit which takes the power from the battery. We've got the 400 volts direct current from the battery, right. which needs to be converted into alternating current. So that converts it into 160 volts AC. Right. And that is then transferred to this unit right. over here, uh, where we have uh, outlets and we have a transformer to put it into a European voltage. Right. Um, the batteries in the leaf will run uh, the average house for around two days. So right. you've got an awful, awful lot of power yeah. in there. Um, so if you need to use power remotely or when the grid is no, not available, yeah. then this provides a very useful right. extra. I hadn't thought of that, so because I've got solar panels, I mean, I could effectively, if I didn't need the car, I could charge yep. it in the daytime when it's sunny, and then at night, I could watch the telly. I mean, this, 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 <laughs> that, that, that's a, that would be a development step on from this, but right. that's something that we certainly we would look at, yeah. because obviously a lot of customers are looking at ways of powering their houses and their lifestyles yeah. more sustainably, and yeah. a leaf can be part of that. Right. 
And, and we've, I believe we've set up a little demonstration. We have just a, just something. Just demonstration. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have set up uh, to have a, a hot whiskey toddy, right? Uh, with some brocolati whiskey, so we we can uh, experience. Should, that. We, should so we get should we start doing some mixing in here? Then is hot water heated by an electric car battery. Absolutely. So that's the the leaf power supply system has heated up this water. We're not really stretching it. We're doing this. This right. is just a sort of fairly low uh, ampage uh, device. But uh, we've got some hot water in there, and we're going to attempt to make a hot whiskey toddy with right. uh, Brocladi's finest. Uh, it's a leaf special edition a bottle as well. So they've done so a special cool. one for us. Wow. But, um, so little, the, little splash of the. Uh, so we've got cloves in the glasses already. Already got cloves in there. Oh my yeah. god! Little splash. That's like yeah. half a gallon. So then a bit of honey. Bit of honey. So I'll do a lemon in this one. Yeah, you do a bit of lemon there. Do you like a bit of lemon in there? Of... Then that'll be warmed up nicely by the, the hot water. Right. So. Let's just have a sniff of that. Ooh. Ooh, it does smell nice, actually. It does smell good, doesn't it? Do you think we've got to, haven't we? <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> it certainly, it certainly, certainly warms you up from both perspectives, doesn't it? <laughs> That's <laughs> working. I don't think I'll be attempting to drive after this. No, I don't think I will. No, I think we should just let the battery go flat. Absolutely. Even at that. We've had a fantastic time in Scotland. We've seen wind turbines, we've seen marine turbines, we've seen little creatures that fart and produce electricity when they make this. It's been absolutely amazing. Come and visit when you get the chance. Slancher. Was that right? Yeah. Good. Slancher. Can't remember anything now after I've had some of this. It's lovely. It's not cold tea, let me tell you that.